So last week, Adobe released a major update for Lightroom across all its platforms. In addition to a bunch of performance improvements and bug fixes, we also got some incredibly powerful new tools with the headliner being generative remove. Now, pretty much all of the videos that I've seen that covered this update, including the one that I shared last week, focus on Lightroom Desktop and Lightroom Classic. But if there's one thing that I've learned about my audience, especially since I decided to focus exclusively on the new version of Lightroom last year, it's that there are a lot of photographers who use Lightroom Mobile, whether it's on their tablets or their smartphones as their primary device, or they use it in conjunction with Lightroom Desktop on their computers. And because Lightroom Mobile got a bunch of the new tools and updates as its desktop sibling, I thought it'd be helpful to cover them here because while the mobile versions of these tools operate similarly, the user interface and controls are a little bit different than what you see in Lightroom Desktop or Classic. So if you're heavy into Lightroom Mobile or you're considering spending more time with the app, and you really should, this video is for you. So let's dive in. All right, so this you can see is Lightroom Mobile on my iPad and everything I show you will also be available uh, for Lightroom Mobile on the iPhone. And I've mentioned this before, but I'm an Apple user. So the devices that I have at my disposal are like the iPad, the iPhone, and the Mac. If you're an Android user, you'll have these as well. It just might look a little bit different, but for the most part, everything I show you here will be accessible to you. So with that, the first of the two major improvements that you'll experience have to do with lens blur and generative remove, which I just mentioned. So with lens blur, there are actually two updates. The first is if you tap over here, which is the presets browser, so I'll just tap that there. If you back out and then go to premium, which premium is a series of preset categories that you get if you're a paying member of Lightroom. I believe there is a free version of Lightroom if you wanna try it out. You don't get access to these premium presets, but if you're a paying Creative Cloud subscriber, you'll have these uh, when you load Lightroom. So under the premium section, there is a new category here called Adaptive Blur Background. So basically what this does, any adaptive preset will essentially um, it'll look at your image, it'll analyze the qualities of your image, and it'll make a selection based on the image itself. So if you did, for example, if I went back here and I went to Adaptive Sky, these presets would look and identify the sky, it will make a selection of the sky, and then it will apply a certain effect. So the same thing here now can be said for blur background. So it'll basically create a depth map, it'll select what should be in focus and what should be out of focus, and then it'll apply a certain effect. So here, if I tap, for example, circle, Lightroom will identify the depth map. It'll make the foreground here, as you can see, out of focus, and it applies certain settings. Now you can also tap on that preset here and you have this amount slider, so you can kind of back off or make it super strong. But the point is that this is like any other preset, especially an adaptive preset, where it will automatically make a selection within the image and apply the effect. I'm gonna cancel out though, because what I wanna do now is actually show you uh, one of the improvements to the lens blur controls. So lens blur was first introduced last October uh, at Adobe Max. And uh, I have a video here if you wanna kind of really dive into how that works, uh, check it out. But if we tap here, the lens blur is this kind of like a drop icon. This is where you can activate it. Now by default, it's off. You can see blur amount is a zero. So what I generally like to do is I'll take the blur amount and I'll kind of jack it up just so I can see where Lightroom is applying uh, blur. And just like before, we do have these different kind of bokeh effects. So you can see there's circle, uh, bubble, five blade, ring, and cat eye. And what that does is it changes kind of the, the bokeh effect, the qualities of the blur, especially if you have specular highlights, the shapes of those specular highlights will change. So I'll stick with circle here. Now, obviously, this blur amount, this is not what I would keep. It just helps me visualize where Lightroom is applying blur. Here's where things get better. We now have the ability to kind of control where in the image the blur will be applied. Before, it was pretty much just whatever Lightroom identified. You can adjust the strength and then um, choose the, the uh, blur type. But now you can see there's this focus button on the top here, and if I tap on it, we now have this range control. So the range control essentially dictates where blur should be applied. And the way that it works is pretty much anything outside of this range tool here will be blurry and anything inside, basically where the, the range tool falls, 
will be in focus. And from left to right, the left is the things that Lightroom identifies as being closest to you. And as you go to the right, which you can see here by moving this around, as you go to the right, those are things that are further away. So let's say I wanted to flip this around. Let's say I wanted the, the kind of brush in the foreground to be in focus and I wanted the background to be out of focus. What I can do is I can take this range tool here, move it to the left, and as I do that, do you see how things in the foreground are becoming sharp and everything in the background is uh, becoming out of focus? Now, in addition to kind of controlling where that blur is applied, I can also extend that depth map. So you can see how that the depth map is kind of harsh, the way it kind of goes along the edge of the brush. If I take the right bumper here and I drag it out, basically what I'm doing is I'm making that depth map deeper. I'm allowing more of the image to be introduced. Now, this doesn't look good for a few reasons. One, the depth map is a bit too abrupt, and two, the blur amount is too strong. So let me do this, watch. I'm gonna close out of here, I'm gonna cancel out, I'll discard changes, and then I'm gonna go back into the uh, lens blur. Let's add that blur strength back. And now we'll go back to the focus range controls. Now there's another way that you could control what should be in focus. On the bottom left, you see two icons. The first is kind of the auto subject select. So that's Lightroom identifying what should be in focus. But then there's also this target button here. This kind of is the same dropper that you'd use when using Lightroom Mobile if you are uh, getting a custom white balance, for example. Except instead of getting a white balance, this control, this target, is telling Lightroom what should be in focus. Now, as I drag this around, look at the range tool on the bottom. So watch, as I take it and I move it to the foreground, you see how the range is like, oh, okay, you want the foreground in focus, so the range control moves to the left. But as I bring it to the back, you see how it's like, oh, okay, you actually want the, the far background in focus. So it's a cool way to kind of tell Lightroom, like, all right, this is what I want in focus right now. And again, you can adjust the kind of depth of this map. So I can take the left bumper here of the range uh, control, and as I bring it to the left here, more of the foreground will be in focus. Now, I don't want that. I actually do want to have kind of that middle area to be the sharpest part. So let's go ahead here, I'm gonna tap on apply. That's gonna actually refine the depth map. And now what I can do is I can take the blur amount and really, I mean, you don't want a strong blur. Like you kind of want something like around 13% here. Now, in the event that you just don't want to have the blur amount, you wanna undo this, you can either take the blur amount slider and bring it to zero or to the left of the cancel button on the bottom, you'll see there's kind of an arrow pointing to the left here, this one right here. So if you tap on that, that will basically reset this panel. Now, there is one other major, major improvement that Adobe added to Lightroom, and that's generative remove. But before I show it to you, I just wanna take a quick minute to tell you about my course called Lightroom Everywhere. Uh, basically, so if this stuff is interesting to you, if you wanna kind of learn everything about Lightroom, whether it's Lightroom Desktop, Lightroom Mobile, Lightroom Web, this course has everything. It is the most comprehensive course covering Lightroom out there. It's got, at this point, over 10 hours of easy paced lessons because I just updated the course to include these new updates and improvements. And you don't even have to take my word for it because I have plenty of absolutely wonderful student testimonials on the website so you can see what other students think about the course. I'll leave a link in the description below. Trust me, if you want to learn about Lightroom, if you're thinking about moving from Lightroom Classic to Lightroom, please give this course a shot. It's really great and I think you'll love it. So with that, Let's dive back in. All right, so I mentioned that the new tool here, it's huge and it is called generative remove. So you'll notice that there is this little eraser icon on the right here, it's this guy right there. So if I tap on it here, there are a few things that I want to show you. First, just like before, there are three different remove tools. There is the content aware remove brush, there is a healing tool, and then there's also the clone stamp. Now, before this update was released, that generative AI switch was not there. It was just the content aware remove brush and it was really good. But we now have generative remove and it's powered by Adobe Firefly. So a few things I wanna show you. First, you'll notice on the top here, there is this early access badge. So if you tap on this, it will explain that currently generative remove is kind of like in a beta. 
And so what that means is, yes, sometimes if you make a stroke, it might not give you uh, the results you were expecting. And so for now, it's allowing you to try this experimental tool. The more you try it, the more you leave feedback, the better it's going to get. And eventually it's going to get to a point where early access will be removed. Actually, fun fact, up until last week's update, Lens Blur, the feature I just showed you, was early access. So from October until uh, May, that tool was being uh, iterated on and improved to the point where it's at this point where Adobe's like, all right, this is kind of like a production ready tool. We're gonna remove early access and the quality is at a point where they're really happy. Same thing goes with generative remove. Same thing goes really with all of the generative fill technologies that we've seen in Photoshop and Firefly. These are still kind of being built, they're being iterated on, they're being improved. And so I think it's awesome. I'm a big fan of this. Like I would rather have access to this kind of beta version, see how it works, uh, than have to wait even longer until it's kind of released. So with that, I'm gonna tap on Godded here. I just wanted to show you that while this is an early access, I've talked about how there are generative credits. That's how Adobe is kind of keeping track of when you use generative fill or generative expand or generative remove. Based on the plan that you have that you're subscribed to with Adobe, you get a certain amount of credits every month. I have a video that I explained all that stuff. But while this is an early access, you're not going to be charged any credits for generative remove brush strokes. So it's a great opportunity for, for you to test it out. So with that, I want to show you here the difference between uh, using the regular content aware remove brush and the generative remove brush. So I took this photo at a local preserve a couple months ago. And actually one of the things I meant to tell you, I forgot to tell you this in the beginning because I'm working on Lightroom Mobile, the photo uh, that I showed you with the lens blur and this photo, I just took it with my iPhone 15 Pro Max. They're both mobile photos because I think a lot of people who use Lightroom Mobile, they just import their photos from their camera roll. And so I wanted to show you how these these uh, tools work on mobile photos. So just uh, that was just a quick aside there. So let's say here I have this this guy was just standing there and I was kind of <laughs> I was kind of waiting for him to to move but he was on the phone and I didn't want to bother him. And I knew that I could if I really wanted to, I could use some of my remove tools whether it was the Lightroom tool or I could bring it to Photoshop and remove him. So here, what I want to do is show you what it kind of looks like without generative remove. So I'm going to first adjust my brush size here using the size slider. I'm going to make it around that size. And then I'm just going to make a stroke on this guy. And Lightroom will analyze and it will basically try to remove him. And you can see that, I mean, it's not bad. I mean, it is kind of bad. I, I should say that. But it's not absolutely terrible. Now what I could do is I can tap on refine here and I can tap on this refresh button and Lightroom will try again. And it is using a bit of AI to kind of fill in that area, but it doesn't do the best job. Now, one of the things that you should know is there is no delete here. The, to delete this stroke, what you have to do is tap on that restore selection. So it, I'm not exactly sure that the wording is a bit confusing. It should just say remove or delete. So I'll tap that and it will remove the selection. Now though, what I have is, I have this generative AI. Actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I just thought of this. What I wanna do is actually, I wanna try this out. I'm gonna tap and make a selection and remove this guy again. So just like that. And let's see what happens. So yeah, not very good. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tap on done. Then I'm gonna go to versions and I have a, if you don't know what versions are, check this video out. It's one of the most underrated features of Lightroom. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a version here and I'm gonna call this um, Content Aware Remove. And let's click on Create. So now I, now I have kind of a Content Aware Remove version. I'll go ahead here, I'm gonna to go to Content Aware Remove again here. Let's refine and I'm gonna remove that option so we're back to where we were. But now I'm going to enable Generative AI. So this is when you enable that switch, generative remove is turned on. So I'm just gonna make another selection just kind of like before. And this time Lightroom is gonna use Firefly to try to intelligently remove and fill. And you can see it does a much, much better job, but it's not just this one selection. If we tap on refine again, 
If you've used any of Adobe's uh, generative AI tools, generally when you make a selection, uh, you get three variations and it's the same here with generative remove. So you can see there are three variations. I can tap, this is one out of three, that's two out of three, and that's three out of three. And actually I think two out of three is the best one. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tap on done. I'm gonna tap on done again. And then I'm gonna to go to versions and let me create another version. And I'm gonna call this generative remove and tap on create. So now what I can do is I can kind of compare the two. So if I tap on this one, you can kind of see how much better it is. So this is the content aware remove. This is the non generative remove stroke. And in this one, I mean, it's really, really a lot better. So let's go ahead, I'm gonna tap on apply. I wanna go back to generative remove here and I want to show you something else. In the event that you make a stroke and Lightroom introduces something that shouldn't be there for whatever reason, it's just not right, it's it, whatever reason. What you can do is you can tap on this little info icon to the right of the generative AI switch and you can tap on report variation. And so I bring this up because we all want this tool to be the best it can be. Like I want it to be the best it can be. I'm sure you do too. And in situations where something is introduced that shouldn't be there, you can see this report variation and you can select the type of uh, kind of infraction, the thing that was introduced that shouldn't be there and submit it. I, I highly recommend doing that because it really will help Adobe improve the quality of their AI model that's used uh, for this feature. And the last thing I just wanna show you about this is let's tap on refine, which you can see there's our stroke. If you tap and hold on the stroke, you can also change the type of stroke. So if you wanted it to be a clone stamp or a heel, you can do that. I just wanted to show that to you. That's really quickly, just a little piece of trivia. But again, if you want to delete the stroke with it selected, you would just tap on restore selection, you can tap that there and the guy's back. I'm gonna go ahead and undo that because I actually want the guy to be gone. So I'll tap on done and there you go. All right, so there you have it. We have several major new improvements. We've got the new preset category of adaptive lens blur. We also have the improved lens blur controls, but that's not only it. The actual lens blur model that's used has been improved. So the quality should be even better than before. And then of course we've got generative remove, which it, to me is a, it's a huge thing because it's the first time that we have actual Firefly technology built right into Lightroom. I think this is only the first of several new things we're gonna see in that space and I'm really excited about it. Now, if you are a Lightroom desktop user, I have this video here where I cover the updates to Lightroom desktop. So be sure to check that out as well. Don't forget to click the link below if you want to learn more about Lightroom everywhere. And if this video was helpful, a thumbs up is always appreciated, as is clicking on subscribe and the bell icon to be notified of all future videos. Thanks a lot, everyone.